Hi, my name's Jake. I'm the Outdoor Product Category Manager at Magpul Industries, and this is the DACA Grid Case Organizer. So the Grid Case Organizer is a drop-in storage and organizational solution for hard cases. So it protects and organizes your most sensitive equipment when being either stored or transported in a hard case. The system overall is made of EPP panels and blocks. These blocks are pressed into the panels and it makes the system essentially endlessly customizable. So if I were to reconfigure this rifle or remove the rifle completely and put other gear, the blocks are easily pushed into the panel and there is nothing destructive about it. There's no cutting, trimming of any kind. It's lightweight, easily removable, and installed. So here at Magpul, we use a lot of cases. We use a lot of rifle cases, storage cases. Um, a lot of times what we find is that although uh, the cases have obviously changed a lot over the years. The internal organization system that's inside the cases has not. All right, there's, there's been little to no um, advancement in, in foam. Uh, you do have pick and pluck, egg crate foam, uh, which you get in a lot of these cases, just a full sheet of foam. Um, you know, you can obviously contact a vendor and they will um, laser cut foam of different densities, uh, but that can be costly. It's also a one-time use thing. So if I were to remove this rifle and take this magnified optic off and then install a red dot, I may not have rendered the system useless. However, now I have gaps and it's obviously different. Um, if I were to go the opposite way and I had a red dot and I had the system laser cut to this, uh, to this rifle and then I wanted to add a magnified optic, I would now either have to take like a turkey cutter or a knife and carve the system or carve the foam out to fit this rifle. So there's a lot of limitations and that was what we saw when we started looking at uh, the internal solutions that were out on the market today. So there were a bunch of requirements that, that we created for ourselves and we, we wanted the system to be a, a drop-in solution. So it was something that I didn't have to drill into the case or drill into the panels of any sort. Um, I also didn't want to have to glue or tape any of it. I wanted to be non-destructive. So I didn't want to have to pull out my knife and carve foam or cut foam or create templates. It's time consuming. Um, I didn't want to use pick and pluck. And I also wanted it to be as durable as possible. So a lot of times with just regular open cell foam, it becomes a snag hazard. If you get oil, dirt, uh, which is very common, right? You go to the range and you leave your case open and before you know it, you have, it looks like a beach in the inside of your case. Um, the great thing about the EPP is because it's closed cell foam, you can essentially remove it and wash it off if you wanted to. Um, so highly durable. And, and easily just cleaned if need be. We also wanted the system to fit a multitude of case sizes. So if I have a rifle case, a carbine case, and then a long rifle case, I don't want to have to either have different foam uh, layouts or cutouts for each case. It would be, have been great to just pull out the system and then easily install it into the other cases. So for instance, if I was at home and I had uh, this probably more of a recce rifle setup in this hard case. Um, and this was where I stored it, whether it was in my basement or, or wherever. And then I had this CZ in a safe. Um, this case is obviously set up for this rifle. Um, it's completely different in dimensions, different optics, uh, doesn't have a can, no flashlight. Um, so I would remove this rifle. Now, obviously, with regular base foam, um, not pick and pluck, uh, nothing is cut out or carved out. Uh, historically, you would just lay the, the rifle on the foam, probably take another layer of foam, lay it on top of it, um, and close the case. Now, in that, with that type of uh, setup, you know, the, the rifle is basically relying on, or the, the foam is relying on compression. There's nothing bracing or stopping the rifle from moving around. It's very common, and I know you guys have definitely done it, is to take a rifle, lay it on the foam, and then take 
all your extra gear and kind of pile it around the rifle. It's something that I think that we have all done. Um, you close the rifle or close the case, latch it, and then hope for the best. If it was pick and pluck or something that you had laser cut, if I were to place this rifle in it, it wouldn't fit and it would be a, a completely different setup. Like I would need to remove the pick and pluck or remove that laser cut foam or buy another case. Uh, with the grid, it's a completely different thing. This thing can be reconfigured for this rifle um, in, in a matter of seconds. So if you're starting with a blank slate, um, the grid panels obviously have no blocks on them and you're gonna load a rifle in, this, in the case. Uh, first thing I like to do, obviously make the, make sure the rifle is clear and safe. There are different configurations, uh, in some instances based on weight. So this rifle is under seven pounds, so that gives me initial direction on how I'll be packing this out. So I'll lay the rifle down. Um, when you're positioning it in the case, it's gonna take a little time, right? There's gonna be certain things that you'll learn as you continue to do this. It's like playing Tetris. Um, it, it's all about kind of seeing how uh, the rifle lines up with the individual grid panels and grid squares, and then positioning the blocks off of that. So this system will have eight triple blocks and eight double blocks. Because it's less than seven pounds, the first thing that I always like to start with is the butt pad. I'll take these uh, doubles and then place them against the back against the butt pad. From there, I typically look at the optic and because this is a red dot, uh, you know, you always want to make sure that the optic is not touching the case walls. It's very important. If this thing were to take a large drop, and I mean large from, let's say, you know, above 36 inches, uh, you definitely do not want this optic to contact the case walls. So what we like to do is kind of cordon this thing off. Um, we also do not want the optic to be resting against the blocks. So I'm just going to take a couple of step or spaces away from the, the uh, optic and then set the blocks in place. So basically I have the blocks kind of cordon off and the optic cordon off and it creates kind of a safe space for the optic. Now I'll start with the, the barrel. Um, again, this is kind of user preference, but I'll take these triples and just because of the way the rifle is laying, I'm gonna place two triples here and just protect the rifle. You can see we're starting to kind of build this wall, so to speak, around the, around the rifle. It's always important to note too that the blocks, the blocks must contact uh, the rifle and go all the way to the case wall. Now this can be done with a single block, whether it's a single double or a triple, but then there are obviously times when you're gonna to need to kind of build it out and take like a triple and then offset a, a double block. So in this case, right here at the base, I'll take a, a triple and then I'll take a vertical or a, a, a double block and set it in kind of like an L shape. And I'll probably end up doing the same back here. Again, always taking it from the, making sure that the blocks are contacting from the rifle to the case wall. It's really the best way to brace the rifle and, and keep it from contacting the case walls. It, it's not gonna be perfect, right? And, and what I mean is that the rifle may or may not always be you know, completely stable where you cannot move it. Once you close the lid, the lid foam and the base foam and the panels and the blocks will all compress and keep the rifle stable and, and you know keep it from moving. So like I said before, you always have eight triples and eight doubles. Uh, the way I reconfigured this, the way I configured this rifle, I still have blocks left over. Um, we definitely like to use every single block if possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to, to kind of pack this rifle out So 
So there you have it. I used all eight blocks. Um, I made sure that where the blocks are contacting the rifle or touching the rifle, that I'm carrying that as a continuous kind of line all the way up to the case wall. So in every instance, you know, near the base, near the front of the handguard, it's contacting from the handguard all the way to the case on the back. Uh, near the buttstock, it's the same thing. The rear to the butt pad, barrel, and obviously, and then uh, towards the top of the rifle, and then kind of cordoning off around the, the optic. So the, one of the great things about the, uh, the grid organizer is that it not only kind of optimizes the inside of your case, you also get kind of these areas uh, that are, you know, that you can place other items. Typically, even when we're using just regular base foam, it's very, very typical for you to place your rifle on top of the base foam or on top of the foam and then take items and just kind of line the case um, just using the space. Well, the blocks just kind of naturally create these little areas, these small cavities um, that you can either place DACA pouches, your ear pro, eye pro, um, and it will keep these items from basically kind of floating around. I think we've all been there where we've packed the case out. Um, we've traveled somewhere, whether you're flying or you're driving to the range. And then when you open your case, um, you're either your eye pro or ear pro or additional magazines have kind of migrated their way through the case. So it's just another benefit to the uh, grid case organizer. So when you notice when you, you have your rifle and you have the entire grid panel set up and the grid system set up, um, if your rifle does you know, shift or move, that's okay. There's certain things that you can do to kind of mitigate that, especially if you have like an extendable buttstock. With this guy, you, know, you can kind of create these like micro adjustments where you extend the buttstock and you can get the barrel and the rear or the butt pad to contact the blocks and that will kind of keep the or take the slack out um, of the rifle but all that being said it, it is okay that the rifle has some slight movement you obviously don't want it to be free floating um, but you also don't want to have to cam the block in this can create kind of premature damage of the blocks the blocks are made to to kind of brace and cordon off these areas so so the rifle should essentially sit comfortably so we'll have things like barrel trays um, or v blocks that can reposition the barrel and reposition the rifle in a more comfortable way that allows it to kind of inf interface or play with the other additional blocks uh, we'll also have different angled blocks that give you uh, you know, something like this CZ where there is a lot of kind of angularity in this rifle and you'll be able to get blocks positioned directly against the handguard and probably optimize its, its positioning on the grid panel.